Welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Bibi Batunde Ikotu, and today I have a very, very special guest with us. You know, Franklin is not a stranger. The last time we had such an amazing conversation about comparison, and a lot of you liked it. So today is back on my channel, and we're going to be talking about something very interesting. I'm sure you've already seen the topic of today, so you already have an idea of what exactly we're going to be discussing. But before we get right into it, please don't forget to thumbs up hit the subscribe button. I want us to be friends. Like I'm forcing it on everybody now. We need to be friends. Comment, feel free to ask questions. It's going to be an amazing session and I'm super excited because Franklin is one of those people that if you have and you're having a conversation with him, you're just getting a lot of insights. Like it's always a good time talking to this guy. So I'm so glad he's here and I can't wait for us to dive into the topic. So um, today we're going to be talking about balances. What does it mean? Is it really difficult to live a balanced life? Can anyone really have it all? And if we can't have it all, how can we strive to ensure that every area of our life is experiencing some kind of balance so that way our professional life is not taking the lead, whereas our personal life is are like lagging behind like we really need balance we're going to be talking about practical ways because i mean we're all about the practical practicality we don't just want to have a conversation here today and it's just theory and you're like okay what did i gain no yeah. you're going to be learning practical ways mm -hmm. of maintaining balance and i have a question i'm going to throw in a uh, franklin hopefully he's ready and <laughs> so yeah let's let's just get right into it so franklin welcome welcome do you want to reintroduce yourself maybe this is a new subscriber that hasn't seen our past video and they would like to get to know you oh yeah sure uh but before i start i just want to say thank you very much for those uh very kind words <laughs> i really appreciate it. and um i'm also very grateful for the work you do um you know uh i, I whenever i see you on uh, you know youtube or on uh instagram I'm like oh my god I'm, I'm really very impressed so keep up the good work it's really very thank amazing you. so uh, amazing more, more um more grace <laughs> thank yeah you. Uh, so I think um, I'll just describe myself in, uh, say, three words. Mm -hmm. uh, I am an author, speaker, and IT professional. I'm based yes. in, um, in um, Ottawa, Canada. And um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. <laughs> yes, that's it. And aside from that, it's also much more than that. It's such a, like, his book is really good. You guys should check it out. I think I put a link to it in the last video we did, mm -hmm. like, Franklin is an institution of knowledge. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, it just gave you three words to describe himself. It's so much more. Trust me, guys. It's so uh, much more. Thank you very much, David. <laughs> You're welcome. So we're going to move right into our topic, right? And the first question I have for you today is what exactly does balance mean? Like, how can you define balance? Maybe someone is watching this and they don't even get the idea of balance. Mm -hmm. What exactly does it mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, uh, you know, like when you, when you hear the word balance, the person mm -hmm. that would normally come to mind is, say, equal or mm -hmm. equilibrium, right? Mm -hmm. For those who be like, you know, physics, the science students out there. So you think about equilibrium, you know, meaning that things are like, you know, uh, same scale, same level. But mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to like uh, life in general, uh, that definition doesn't fly. So in practicality, I would say, especially in relation to I like, like life, right? Which we're talking about, we're focusing on, right? So, so balance means um, allotting appropriate, not equal amount of time and effort across the major areas of our life. So use of the words appropriate, not equal, right? Because um, you will agree with me that life can be <laughs> complex sometimes. We have like different major areas and categories to take care of. We have the health and fitness, we have the finances, you have a quality mm -hmm. that they're just a lot, you know, a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, all of these areas, they are actually they're distinct, but they are also interrelated, right? So yes. We just have one life. And so the honest is on us to actually figure out, okay, how much time do I need to spend on this one area? And the very interesting thing is that um, not we don't need equal amount of time to perform at an optimal state in all of the different areas of our life. And that's why I use the word appropriate. So we're, we're allotting appropriate amount of time to the different areas of our life based on our priorities and our goals, because all of those also change with time um, uh -huh. in, in our life, right? We are different students in our life and different priorities um, mm -hmm. for pursuing. And, and that calls for allocating um, resources appropriately. 
to the different absolutely i hope that kind of makes sense Yes, it does. I like the fact that you used appropriate right. and the fact that it also changes over time. Mm -hmm. um, for many of us, the older we get, the more access we're going to get to finances. Mm -hmm. So the time we're spending in maybe cooking, cleaning, <laughs> doing all those things, we can actually outsource it. Exactly. So that way we can begin to use our time to make more income, mm -hmm. to create more wealth, mm -hmm. to apply to other places. Mm -hmm. So imagine if you have enough money in your bank mm -hmm. and you spend three to four hours every weekend cleaning, cooking, doing mm -hmm. all these things. If you had enough, you can just easily outsource it. Mm -hmm. Use that same time, mm -hmm. invest it back in another area of your life. It could be physical exercising. It could be anything else in general. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't necessarily have to be what you can outsource. So if I really like that word, approach. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, you don't want to spend time doing things that you can outsource, you can delegate yeah. someone else in your life to do, or you yeah. can easily just put on the shelf. If you know mm -hmm. that it's something that's not going to take me time, I'm just mm -hmm. going to put it on a hold and like address it later. So I really like that. Like it's important for us to be able to balance these things, know that, okay, my spiritual life is primary to me. Like instead of me spending four hours with entertainment, because entertainment isn't a bad thing, uh -huh. watching uh -huh. a movie, listening to music, playing video games are not necessarily bad, right. but what really profits you are like putting four hours of your day to like <laughs> all those things when you've not even spent five minutes to pray, yeah. right? You need to yeah. like take time out of certain places and like just plug it in the areas that are like your priorities so exactly. i really really like that exactly. so my next sorry did you want to say something uh no i mean like those, those examples were just you know spot on uh, I, I couldn't mm -hmm. agree um you know <laughs> anymore yeah thank yeah. you so my next question is why can it be difficult for someone to live a balanced life like I, there are a lot of young people thinking about like, I just feel like there's a lot for me to do. And I don't know how to like really appropriate timing and skills and all these things into everything I have on my plate. And the truth is the older we get, the, I, I wanted to say the bigger our plates get. Yeah, the bigger <laughs> our plates get, oh, but the tighter the space. Mm. So a lot of things will keep coming. And for us now, we're young professionals. Mm. Um, I'm married. You're not yet married. But then mm. we'll get married. You have to share your time with someone mm -hmm. else. You mm -hmm. have children. You have to spend your time with these people. So like, if we can find <clears throat> the key to why it's difficult to have a balanced life now, maybe that would help us the older we get. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I don't know what your thoughts are on why you think it's just so difficult to find some kind of balance in life? Yeah, um, that's a, I think that's a very, very important question. And um, I, can, I can assure you that if you say where to survey about 100 people, right? Let me just, mm -hmm. be, let me reduce the number. <laughs> if you were to survey about, you know, say 20 people, um, you're likely going to find, uh, say, like 75% of people who are having the same issues, right? Mm -hmm. Because I think it's, it's just a very common um, problem. And it's not really a problem that, um, that we, get we get taught, say, at school, right? Not everybody gets to, like, you know, learn about, um, you know, uh, balancing, right? Some people may, 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 you know, may, have the, may have had the privilege, but I think um, that could be, like, part of the reason. It's not, it could be difficult because it's, it's not a very common or popular topic that's been taught about, right? People only voice that complaint, that concern, oh, that problem, oh, I have issues with balance, oh, I have issues with, you know, time management and whatnot, right? But then, you know, there are not a lot of, you know, um, solutions that have been um, offer offered out there. So I think that that's partly uh, one of the reasons. And obviously, the other reason would just be that, hey, let's just face it, life can be complicated. <laughs> Life can be complicated. We just have to acknowledge that, right? But sometimes uh, I feel like um, the acknowledgement doesn't happen. And people yeah. just think that, you know, I can just live my life the way I want and just pursue my dreams and my goals. But then they are very narrow-minded. They don't think mm -hmm. about the scope of their life in its entirety, right? They don't think that, okay, uh, it's important to be effective in the area of health and fitness. It's important mm -hmm. to be effective in the area of um, uh, sp spirituality, in the area of uh, finances. Like mm -hmm. these different buckets and and then um uh so i'd say like you know one of the the other reason would just be that you know uh, people don't think about they don't think about it much often they don't think yeah. about their life in the holistically picture. exactly mm -hmm. they, yeah. they don't think it's a holistic approach to planning they may just be worrying or thinking about oh business my business business plan or mm -hmm. thinking about uh, my, my money <laughs> Vision for me, but you know they don't think about the others, right? Absolutely. And, uh, and, uh, so, so that's that. That would, that that is gonna be another reason why I think it's um it's uh it's difficult, right? Mm. Um, the other reason I think it is difficult is 
priorities. Mm -hmm. Priorities. Um, so there's a very popular saying that you know, when everything is the priority, nothing is the priority. <laughs> Right. So, uh, so then um, the other, to, just to uh, further elaborate on that point, um, it could be difficult because maybe we haven't set our priorities right. Mm -hmm. Right. We cannot do, we're not called to do everything. Right. So the things, because they are at every given point in time, there are like 1,000 possible things or 1,001 possible things we can be doing, but we can, we're not called to do everything. So we have to decide what are my priorities. But then we, it, it can get really very difficult for us to balance when we try to do everything or we're trying to do more than we, are, uh, we, we ought to do. So, um, so, so life can actually uh, come back and crush us and smack us in the face. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like that you mentioned that most times we're not thinking about it and we're not taught. So I feel like it's something that we all have to be intentional about, um, exactly. especially exactly. with our younger ones, right, during mm -hmm. school. And most times you just start to read your book, face your, fix your <laughs> studies. Like that's the only thing, that's the only advice they get from parents and older ones you're still right. in school face your book read your studies and <laughs> everything <laughs> exactly go to church exactly and whereas there are other ways to nurture them right many university mm -hmm. students many younger ones they deal with a lot of stress mm -hmm. so even a man conversation of like ah have you added some kind of like fitness into your life? Like, mm -hmm. cause you know, when we work out, like it changes our mindset. Right. Like if you're stressed and you work out, like you just feel so much better after. Like like I, I know, right? Like I always love it after I get off work and I just do mm -hmm. like a YouTube workout, nothing extreme mm -hmm. or anything, mm -hmm. but just to like get that energy out. Um, mm -hmm. I remember mm -hmm. a few weeks back, I saw this girl on Twitter. Mm -hmm. She, um, I think she had tweeted something. I think she said, oh, young people, take care of yourself. I'm not even 21 yet. And I had a stroke. Oh, and I was like, what? Oh. And she was like, yeah, it's because many times we're not paying attention to areas we should be paying attention because mm -hmm. the also culture is so in our mm -hmm. face. We all feel like mm -hmm. we have to be hustling, mm -hmm. making money. Like that's all we mm -hmm. want to talk about. How many, mm -hmm. like how much we're doing. Whereas yeah. all these that's other things that require exactly. our attention. It exactly. matters. Like we have to nurture our body. Wow. We have to nurture our minds. We have to nurture mm -hmm. our spirit. Like mm -hmm. we should not just nurture our bank account. And right. some people too, they might be making money, mm -hmm. but they've not gotten that financial literacy. on like, mm -hmm. okay, it's good to make money, but am I investing in stock? Mm -hmm. Am I dealing with my student loans mm -hmm. and my credit card loans? Like, so like, I like what you said about like, we don't really see life in the big picture. Mm -hmm. It's very mm -hmm. easy for us to live in like fragments, like, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. fragment part time until something mm -hmm. happens you're like okay i'm going to be serious about my diet and my fitness mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. when your health goes back to the optimized state mm -hmm. then you go back to start off school but really yeah. you should start prioritizing things like and for me i would say my top three priorities are um family mm -hmm. my relationship with god mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um my like general well-being mental right. physical right. and all of that and if right. we can have like top three priorities and find a way for everything to like trickle into those right mm -hmm. if your well-being is your priority then you know you gotta eat right you have mm -hmm. to work out you have to meditate stretch mm -hmm. your mind meditate mm -hmm. on god's word mm -hmm. and all of that too as well so i really like that and and just for anyone listening this is not us saying we have it all figured oh, no, out because no of course not <laughs> no absolutely yeah. not we yeah. none of we don't have it all figured mm -hmm. out but mm -hmm. the fact that we're aware right. is the beginning exactly. of the journey like exactly. in as much as you can be aware like wow there are a lot of things in my life that are not taking like i'm not seeing it i'm not seeing the full picture i'm just like hustling here and it's back to balance because at the same way, you can't say, oh, I can't come and go and kill myself. I'm just going to leave <laughs> life and forget business and forget everything. Like, carry everything as along as much as you can. Right. And like I said previously, outsource if you need to. Yeah. Outsource if you need to. Don't be ashamed of mm. outsourcing any part of your life that you feel like you cannot undo at that point in time. <clears throat> So wow, that's very, very, much. very, I, I think my, my, my belly got filled up right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad. That's amazing. I'm so glad. Yay. Yeah, 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 for sure. This is a very powerful point for sure. Yay. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad. <laughs> All right, let's move to the next question. Yeah. So what are some, mm -mm, I think my question is, why is it important to strive for balance in our lives? I know we've already mentioned some things, but mm -hmm. why would you say, someone that is listening to them, like, okay, you guys are talking about balance, but why should I care? Why should mm -hmm. I strive for balance? The mm -hmm. system I have now is working. It's not broken. Mm -hmm. 
So why should I incorporate more, like a more balanced outlook towards my life? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, just um, coming to think about it, first of all, I feel that enjoying uh, or living a balanced life would, would lead to fulfillment. Mm -hmm. fulfillment. When I say fulfillment, because I feel that uh, a person is a person is not gonna be very fulfilled when they're not excelling in the mm -hmm. areas of life that matters the most to them. Yes. So I don't think if, for example, um, uh, say health and fitness is important. Well, I mean, health and fitness should be important to everyone. Because Everybody, <laughs> right? <laughs> so imagine you're, you're making a lot of money, right? In the area of, uh, say, finances, you're, you're crushing it, man. Six figures every month, mm -hmm. right? And um, in, the, in your career, you're like just crushing. You're knocking it off the park. But then, man, like in the area of health and fitness, like you're, um, maybe you're, you're ill um, or maybe even bedridden, like, I don't know to say that that's if you feel like the person is enjoying their life in the first place, not to even talk about living a fulfilled life, right? Mm -hmm. So I feel that that's going to be like the main, the main reason why we ought to strive for, uh, strive for that balanced life that I'm talking about here, mm -hmm. right? And then the other reason would be that uh, kind of like an extension of uh, a point uh, I made earlier that the different areas, areas of our lives, uh, uh, they may be distinct, but they are interrelated. In yes. other words, success and failure in one area of life can actually trickle into other areas mm -hmm. of life. And I'll give you a Absolutely. very quick example. So uh, going back, you know, to the, uh, to the, uh, to the quick sample I use about someone who say uh, doesn't, uh, the person is, you know, crushing it in the area of finances, right? But then let's say in the area of uh, health and fitness, the person is not aware of how important it is to exercise, to eat right, to have appropriate um, um, uh, sleep, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously what they think is gonna happen in the long run, right? This person can actually fall ill. And now the person is ill. What do you think is going to happen to their job? Would they, I don't know that they're going to be able to, uh, to, to, to work effectively. And if it's going to be very, if it's a critical illness, they're likely not even going to, to work anymore, right? So now uh, negligence in the area of um, health and fitness has affected uh, uh, the career, the career and the job. And what do you think is going to happen to the person's finances, especially if the finances, uh, the job is a huge income generator? In the household, the person's finances will be will get knocked down, right? And then now the person's finances is locked, is knocked down, and uh, and uh, say the person is really very uh, critically uh, ill, and uh, in the area of social and relationship, that relationship, I don't know that they're going to have like quality and sweet time with family, like going to mm -hmm. play with children, going to hang out with friends. Like if the person is sick, how is it possible to have that happen, right? So now you see how mm -hmm. um, failing to take care of one's um, health spilled into the area of career, it now spilled into the area yes. of um, uh, finances. And now it's going to the area mm -hmm. of relationship. Who knows what that area is going to trickle into, right? And so um, mm. the different areas of our lives are, are distinct, but they are not compartmentalized. Like you use the word mental, yes. right? They're not fragmented. It's not like a box, mm -hmm. box, box, box. They're all like in the same pot. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we need, the right, we exactly. need the right mix, right? The right mix. So, yes. so that's why it's very, very essential that we, we strive towards towards balance, like, you know, fulfilling, uh, living an, en like, you know, living a, a, an enjoyable and a fulfilling life. And then the other mm -hmm. one is because um, uh, the areas of our lives are not isolated. They are not completely yes. compartmentalized. So I think um, those are two main reasons that come to mind. I love those. I love those. Um, I like the fact that you, even another place that it would affect is mental health. Of course. Because okay. now, you're a shadow of yourself. Mm -hmm. All the things you could achieve in your mm -hmm. dream, you can't achieve anymore. Oh so I really like that. It reminded me of another, I'm always on Twitter. So mm -hmm. remind me of another Twitter thread I saw. This guy tweeted, like, his brain broke. Oh, jeez. I didn't even know that was possible. Like, his brain broke. He was in a work that requires a lot of critical mm -hmm. thinking, wow. and he never really took breaks. Mm -hmm. Also culture, wow. working from 7 a.m. to 10 30. Wow. Like it was really, really bad. Wow. He tried to take it slowly. His brain broke. He said he tried to remember basic stuff mm -hmm. that he could do effortlessly, mm -hmm. but he couldn't just find him. He couldn't just do it anymore. Mm -hmm. And he saw different neurologists. They couldn't really explain until he finally saw someone that was like, oh, I think I know what happened to you. Mm. Because of the lifestyle you were living, you mm. weren't taking breaks. You, you weren't taking care of your mind. Wow. You were using your mind so much that you didn't mm. even think like, okay, let me refer this mind. Let me take breaks and pauses. Mm. His brain broke. So everything he loved to do, he couldn't do it anymore. Oh my goodness. And it was just like, wow. And like, I, 
it's it's just important for us to mm-hmm. take care of ourselves like holistically and like yeah. of balance in everything that we do so that yeah. way it goes back to that fulfillment like everyone wants to have a fulfilling life everyone mm-hmm. wants to have that life that you look back and be like okay i like my life yeah. I mean, we may not all be there right right now but it's, it's a goal you're like okay exactly. this is where i'm going to this is who i walking towards the person i'm going to be and for me to be this person everything has to be taken care of and like by god we have the grace of god right we we're not necessarily relying on our own power and our own ability to Mm -hmm. achieve balance um i was watching a sermon i think i sent Mm -hmm. it to you about balances Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. dr phil ranton bello had said something like we never want to be those people that would say everything that i have was because i worked for it Mm -hmm. and we also don't want to be those people that said everything that i have i didn't work for it it was just god's favor Mm -hmm. but then we know that i use the sense the wisdom the skill the talents that god gave to me i applied it to areas of my life and god blessed it and i experienced god's favor too as well like we don't want to be leaning on either spectrum Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. while both spectrums can work together effortlessly Mm -hmm. so thank you so much like fulfillment in life is something i pray for everybody like no one just wants to go through life breezing around like mm -mm. like there should be a goal and i'm so thankful that you mentioned that 100 percent you know, one thing just came just came to my mind. Um, awesome. You know, the very popular saying, "Oh, what can I play me, Jack?" <laughs> Jack, so I, please uh, play. Because, it, because in order for us not to be the dope, <laughs> mm-hmm. we need to strive towards the balance in life. Yes, Honestly. Jack, play, please. Oh, what can I play? <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, Jack, play and walk, please. I beg so you. One thing just came to my mind as well. Um, I think I saw this on someone's um WhatsApp uh, status. Mm-hmm. It was like a, an infographic. Uh, it had like it was a, it split in two. So one section was it was almost like a, I think it was a pie chart um, mm-hmm. sections across uh, different um, with, with different sections. And in mm-hmm. each section, there was say like a, an area of life. So the first the first um, infographic was like okay, these are the things that I thought the things I thought um, I would do to enjoy uh, like a, a success in life. The person mm-hmm. was like work. Everything was like work everywhere. <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> the entire pie chart was <laughs> Oh my god. Nope. And nope. then the next uh, section was like the things I, I I actually need to enjoy success in life. That's when they had person had like some section for work, some mm-hmm. section for play, some section for relationship with God, and mm-hmm. you know, some section for um relationship with others. So it was, you know, the person came to the realization that hey, you know, it's not gonna be all mm-hmm. work. That would work, help. please. No, like, we're working to make money. Without, we need to yeah. at least enjoy that money you're working mm. for in one way or another. Exactly. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, let me move to my next question. Yeah. So now we've been talking, we've spoken about balance, we've spoken about why we need balance, we've spoken about a fulfilling life. So now the people want to hear, okay, you've sold it to me. I need balance. Where do I start from? What mm-hmm. are some practical ways to help me maintain balance? in my life mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> yeah for sure absolutely absolutely um so i, I think we already gave a hint <laughs> as to how to go about doing it and that's you know taking this holistic approach to to planning right so this mm-hmm. having in other words you can just say having a plan for your life right yes you know most times we tend to say uh focus on just specific areas you're like okay i have a plan for my finances right this is how much money i want to be saving every month and this is how much i'm looking to uh to have accumulated by x number of years but then do you have the same plan for your social for your relationship do mm-hmm. you have the same plan for your career do you have the same plan for your, your your work with god right do you have the same plan for your business um if that's not the case then you know it's kind of difficult to see how one can actually attain the uh mm. the so i think um having this holistic approach to planning is going to be the, 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 the best strategy to mm-hmm. uh, seen it. And um, actually, uh, the first time I, uh, w- uh, w- the first time I came across uh, a concept like that, uh, like a clear concept like that, it was from a book uh, titled um, uh, Living Forward, right? Okay. Uh, we have the, they, they, they gave, they coined it a name, they call it a life plan. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's like, you know, before, you know, before coming across the book, I already like did something very close to that. But this one kind of made it very, uh, what I say, official. And it was very, very neat. Right. So it's just the idea behind the, the, the life plan is um, having a vision and a plan for the areas of your life 
that matter the most to you, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's like the that's that's just the the strategy, right? Mm -hmm. And in the life plan, you're going to identify a number of things. Number one, you're going to identify um, like where you are, that in other words, your current state. Because mm -hmm. unless we identify and acknowledge, and you know, acknowledge honestly where we are, it's almost impossible for us to change it. Right. Mm. Once you identify where we are, where am I with my money? Where am I with my relationship? Just be mm -hmm. honest with yourself. Otherwise, you know, it's going to be very difficult to change. And then you want to identify where you want to be. Where is, what's, what, what's the vision you have for your money? What's the vision you have for your relationship? What do you want to see happen differently? Right. And then the next thing you want to do is have like a, uh, uh, a, a strategy because they say that a vision without a plan is just wishful thinking. Right. So you want to have a strategy like a commitment. I'll use that word commitment because it's very strong. It's a strong word. Right. And then your commitment would basically be the actions you're taking on a regular basis to move you from where you are to where you want to be. And you and then the other important thing that like those are I say like those are the three main components to uh, the life plan. There are obviously going to be some other ones as well, but these are the three core um, uh, components uh, for the, the life plan. And obviously, you know, um, this is not something that maybe you would just do one time, right? You're gonna have, uh, you're gonna have like, and mind you, it's gonna be like something written, something you can actually see. Yes, yes, like a vision board. That's exactly. all I was thinking board, about. I was just, as uh, you were talking, I was thinking of my vision board. Exactly, your vision board. And you know, uh, I mean, in addition to that, you can also have like something written, right? A so diary. Do mm -hmm. I will do that, right? This is, this is the thing you want to like document. And the reason you want to document it is, um, uh, studies have shown that um, those people who write down their goals or their visions are much more likely able, are much more likely I'm gonna be uh, achieving them, mm -hmm. but those who do not. In other words, those who just have like a mental picture because come on, mm -hmm. how long is this gonna stay on your head when you're gonna leave the office or leave your work, your, your house and you see so many other thoughts come <laughs> and, and distract you, right? So you wanna like, you know, have um, have everything written down. Um, part of the reason you wanna write it down is so you can revisit it regularly, mm -hmm. regularly. Uh, part of the reason most people don't achieve their new year resolution is they write it down um, January 1st, but guess what? They don't revisit it until December 31st and mm. it's possible for you to, to hit it, right? So when, whatever it is that we track in life, we, we improve at it, right? We get better because wherever it is our attention and our focus goes to, there's always going to be a difference and a change, right? Mm. So, so yeah, like um, I think that's, uh, that's basically uh, a very practical uh, right. solution. Yeah. Um, to, uh, to to tackle you know, addressing uh, uh, the imbalance in life. Mm. I, I like that. I like, I really like that because I have a vision board and as you're speaking, I was just like visualizing too. the vision board. It's right in my room. So when I wake up every morning, it's kind of like what I see mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. I don't, I see it, but sometimes it's like out of mind. Sometimes I'm like more intentional mm -hmm. and like you can add anything to your vision board, right? I put, mm -hmm. I mean, because of COVID, of course, this was not achievable. This year mm -hmm. I put vacation, like mm -hmm cut out pictures of the cities I wanted to go mm -hmm. to the view, mm -hmm. paste it on my vision board, wrote mm -hmm. everything there. And then mm -hmm. I really like the fact that you said that having it written somewhere, because there's only so much I can put on my vision board. Mm -hmm. So like mm -hmm. writing it down in a book. And also I learned this in having a tada list. So when you achieve certain things on your vision board, you like strike it off and do like, ta -da! Yes. Like I did this, I achieved this, that was me. Because mm. then that also helps you when you're planning the next year. You know that it's not a waste of time. You know that everything, sometimes you don't achieve everything you set out to do. Sometimes, mm -hmm. some of the things on my vision board, I know that they were not for this year, but mm. I just put it down there so that my mind can be on it. So when it's mm. practical enough for me to address those things, mm. I can. Which is mm -hmm. why what you said about being brutally honest about mm -hmm. where you are mm -hmm. is so important because mm -hmm. a graduates from school can be saying okay i want to the year i graduate from school that's the year i want to end six figures i mean mm. you're like in it and all those big mm. industries it's possible mm. but if you're like a fundraiser like me good luck mm. it's not really realistic but then knowing that okay this is where i am now i just got it i can't end six figures yes but mm -hmm. like this is my goal even if yeah. it's not for my salary even if it's, i'm going to have a couple of side businesses that can mm -hmm. help generate this income for me putting stuff like okay this is the wait, I want to be at the end of the year. How will I achieve that? I'm, I'm drinking water, I'm working out, minimum of, and also making sure there are smart goals because mm -hmm. it's very easy for us to set goals that are not smart. We just put broad goals, they're not specific. <laughs> you cannot measure it. it like, <laughs> there's, it's, it's not time bound. It's just like, I just have goal. At least, even if it's not complete 
smart. At least let it be specific. Let it be time bound mm-hmm. and be attainable. Like come exactly. on, so exactly. Wow. Yeah. So That's a very very salient point. You know, you ended up with you know. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's a very salient point for sure. Absolutely, completely agree with you on that. Yeah, smart goals, guys. Smart goals, and I mean, sometimes I do understand that these things can be a little bit overwhelming, right? Yeah, like, for sure, for where sure. do I start from? Mm-hmm. And or you don't have to start from a vision board. You can just mm-hmm. pick up your book, your mm-hmm. diary, where you write stuff, mm-hmm. and just itemize it. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. after itemizing it, that's the first thing. Itemize. Okay, these are my goals. This is mm-hmm. what I'm looking forward to do. And don't just focus on the things that people refer to as goals. Because mm-hmm. most of the time we think of goals, we think career, we think finances. Mm-hmm. But think about relationships too as well. Okay, I would like to be in a nice relationship at the end of this year. How will I go about that? I'm going to mm-hmm. talk to more people. I'm mm-hmm. going to put myself out there. I'm not going to be like all blocked out to people. Oh, right. I'd like to improve my relationship with my family members. You put it there, mm-hmm. I'll call them more often once mm-hmm. a week, send a text mm-hmm. message, send a gift during Christmas, wow. a gift during their birthday. Like break yeah. it down into biteable sites. And I'm giving this example so that we can help the wheels in our brain to start mm-hmm. like spinning like, okay, mm-hmm. this is what it looks like. You say mm-hmm. you want to get your own apartment. Maybe you're mm-hmm. living at home or you're living with your friend, but you want to get your own space. How can I get that? Put it down there. This is a budget. How will I achieve this budget? When Absolutely. should I start saving towards mm-hmm. it? You say, okay, I want to improve my relationship with God. It's very sweet to say. Everybody says it. Oh, this year is the year I'll improve my relationship with God. <laughs> but then how do you achieve that? Put exactly. it that, okay, I'll start praying morning and night. If mm-hmm. you notice that, okay, to pray in the night is hard because you sleep off early. Mm-hmm. Set alarm, 8 p.m. I'll pray. So even if I doze off at 9 p.m., mm-hmm. I know I already prayed. But setting mm-hmm. these specific goals, exactly. very, very important. Knowing, okay, by Bible study, I will stop missing Bible studies, not just Sunday service I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start being intentional about Bible study. I'm going to start being intentional about finding friends that are passionate Mm -hmm. about God and God's word and make sure our conversations are around that so that way I can nurture my spiritual journey and my spiritual walk too as well. So it doesn't always have to be career money, but it can be anything, literally, any goal that you have. Yeah very possible so sure, i just wanted sure. to add that too as well 100%. so this is a question oh sorry did you want to add something uh yes please uh, if you don't mind so um uh just um going by uh, just uh, in an extension to what you just laid out by the way those were very very p- fantastic um examples and uh, you broke it down very 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 nicely um so I think um, what's important as well is that we we ask ourselves like what's what are those things that are important to me like right mm-hmm. now and not going values. Be, exactly what's important to me like going back to like you know, the values the priorities what's important to me right now not going based of what somebody else is doing or what people mm-hmm. around them, because they have their own journey to run right exactly you want to like figure out what's going to bring you like joy what's going to bring you happiness what's going to bring you fulfillment because fulfillment mm-hmm. to me is it's like maybe, maybe like the things that, that cause me to be fulfilled may be different than uh what's going to cause you to be fulfilled so that's like absolutely a that each person mm-hmm. wants to um want to identify so you know and obviously um i talked about you know like the the life plan and those components i did not always start up like that like you mentioned i had everything <laughs> i used to have like this small notebook right that i'll carry along i used to write everything every single thing down this was what i wanted to achieve uh there are my finances in my career i'll write it down and you know from time to time i'll erase it i wrote it down on pencil <laughs> <laughs> so I can easily modify it. <laughs> Listen, honestly, I've, ever since I left, uh, maybe like uh, I think um, uh, university, right? I everything I, I wrote down, especially you know personal stuff, I always mm-hmm. write it down. Pen, so I don't know why. So I can use, <laughs> it just helps me to remember that okay, everything is like fixable. Everything mm-hmm. can be subject to change. Exactly, it's subject to change. So um, I run with the vision I have at the moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, I go as far as I can. It may change, and then I mm-hmm. come back. But um, the most important thing is, okay, I'm on the move. I'm going. I'm yes. Going to steal, right. So, so like, um, like, you know, uh, people like, you know, listening, um, don't get discouraged. Um, mm-hmm. and uh, just start with something. If, it, if it's, if it's a book, but please don't write on a piece of paper because you're likely going to trash it out. <laughs> yeah. For find a book, a solid book, something you can hold on to. Yeah. yeah. I like that you said that because it's very easy for you to go into a condemning space when you see that all the things you list out, you're not achieving. Yeah. 
But yeah. remember, you can, it's your list. It's not yeah. set in stone. You can clean it. And the reason why I was even laughing is because on my vision board, one of my goals was to maybe lose like 10 kg. Mm-hmm. And between April and June, I gained two pounds. Mm-hmm. So I was like laughing at myself, like, look at you. Mm-hmm. But then going back and saying, okay, how can I actually, like, how can I? Mm-hmm. It's not, it's not like you wrote it down and like it's sealed with your yeah. blood. No. Yeah. Right. You can go back, erase it. Okay, this thing is not looking practical. Because mm-hmm. in the beginning of the year, I saw someone doing a savings club. They wanted mm-hmm. to say mm-hmm. save, um, I think, $770 every month. And I was like, okay. oh, I can do this. But then reality set, I was like, nah, this isn't for me. I'm not as, like, my finances are not as flexible as these people doing it. Many of them were like young people still living at home. They weren't paying. Of course, you can save $1,000 if you're not paying major bills. It's very right. practical. But then right. going back and saying, okay, this is, I know I was very lofty. I said really lofty goals. Go back mm-hmm. and like, rub it i know this is not time yet a better time will come like i do this thing but change it it's not set in stone it's right. flexible it's not that deep don't exactly. go into a place of condemnation when mm-hmm. you see that things are not going the way you yeah. planned because yeah. i know that happens to a lot of us we, like we write down our goals like this one to achieve then this is even medium this is the time i always advise people to go back and review their goals and when they mm-hmm. see that mm-hmm. depression mm-hmm. kicks in sadness mm-hmm. no don't, mm-hmm. don't be sad mm-hmm. don't be sad about it just mm-hmm. go back and change it change exactly. it like franklin mm-hmm. said it's a goal be on the move don't mm-hmm. become static. Don't get deceived. I'm like, oh, I've not achieved this. It wasn't even the purpose of having a goal. No. Mm-hmm. But the most important thing, um, perfection is not the goal. Progress is. Exactly. Progress. Just progress. know that you're making some kind of progress. Even mm-hmm. if you're not meeting those goals, at least you have goals. Thank God for that. Right. Progress is it. So yes. I'll move to the next question. Oh, did yeah. you want to say something? No, 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 no. I think we've, uh, we've really beat this one on the head for too long. <laughs> <laughs> all right so i think this is actually my last question oh, okay. what do you think is it wrong for christians to have a desire to like blow like make more like stinking not stinking money money that I smells like good. Be stinking, I know. <laughs> <laughs> money that smells good money that feels mm-hmm. like is it wrong for us as believers to desire these things mm. oh wow <clears throat> well that's a very very interesting uh <laughs> Discussion and I know that I've had that that topic, uh, like a discussion on that topic, like with uh, a number of people, right? Mm-hmm. And different people have different points of view. But for me personally, hey, there's absolutely nothing wrong with you know a Christian aspiring. Like me, for example, like I want to have a lot of money, and I know by God's grace, I'll have like a lot, like this thinking. Amen. <laughs> and I'm gonna have a lot of money. Why? Because hey, like um, I just believe so strongly that first of all, like money is not evil. Money is neutral, right? Yes. Like money does not use itself. People use yes. money. So money, the way money is used is only just going to be a reflection of the person using it. Mm-hmm. So if I, I know like, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm working towards the things of God and, uh, and I always want to see like, you know, God's kingdom be expanded and, you know, do a lot of good in the world. What do you think is going to happen like for people who have a lot of money like that? Mm-hmm. It means they're going to be able to do much more good. And do we need yes. much more good in the world? Obviously, yes. Right. But if, you know, money gets into the hand of people who are, you know, um, uh, selfish, thingy, who are evil, who are promoting uh, negativity, what's going to happen? They're going to spill the world with lots of evil. And hey, like the people who are, are proponents of good, they're going to get kind of like dominated. Right. But that's not yeah. what we want. I just mm-hmm. believe, it, um, you know, there's a very popular the, uh, the Bible saying, uh, the Bible uh, verse uh, in First Timothy says, uh, it says love of money. Is the root of evil. He didn't say like money is the root, of, the root evil. of evil. So that, mm-hmm. that Bible verse is mostly uh, mis, uh, mis, uh, misunderstood and misquoted yes. too many times, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to um, this topic. And look, if you look at the Bible, look through the Bible, like people who were, there are lo- so many uh, friends of God who were very, very rich. Look at Abraham. Of course. Abraham mm-hmm. was, uh, he owned like thousands and thousands of cats. He look was at, a rich man. Exactly. Look at mm-hmm. Job, look at David, right? Mm-hmm. These people, they had like a lot of wealth and because they had the wealth, they had influence, right? Yes. How would it be like, you know, people who are for people who are good to have positive influence in the world mm-hmm. as opposed to people who are, you know, like you know, the opposite. They're yes. going to make an impact. But when people who are good have the influence, uh, the people who have a lot of money, most of the time they get to like make decisions and men as in, like, I know for me, I want to be a person of influence, right? Thanks, so, yes. Uh, but then the people should not listen to this and get me wrong. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that, okay, if you don't have money, you can only have be a person of influence if you have money. That's not that's not true. There's so many people who didn't have like, you know, uh, the wealth. Steve Mother Teresa, right? Mm-hmm. 
the Martin Luther King uh, Jr., right? Uh, Nelson Mandela. These people, they were not like the richest people in the world, right? But, but they, they made were impact. Right? They made huge impact. And that to me is what matters the most. If you're going to have a lot of money and you use it just for yourself, then, mate, like, come on, like, what, what's even the purpose, right? Yeah. But if you have lots and lots of money and you're just going to use it to impact the lives of people, make people's life better, man, you're going to be making a huge, massive impact. And for that, you will not be forgotten, right? Yes. So if you spend money for that purpose, then, hey, come on, like, who wouldn't want much more? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that you said the motive matters, right? Exactly. Your, why do you want a lot of money? Mm-hmm. Why do you want to be rich? Is it so everybody just know you as a rich person? Or what mm-hmm. is your agenda for being rich? Yeah. Is it to continue to establish God's kingdom on earth? Is it continue to propagate the gospel? Is it continue to flood entertainment and media with positive and godly content that will encourage and edify people? Like, what is your why? Right. And that's how everyone can answer the question, right? The why as to why you want to make a lot of money matters. Mm-hmm. And like Franklin really said, you don't necessarily have to wait to be in a place of influence or make money to do these things. Wherever you find yourself, you influence it with God's gospel. You mm-hmm. influence it with God's word. Don't wait and say, oh, it's until I get to this corridor of office or I get this amount of money before I can do anything. You mm-hmm. start where you are. You start mm-hmm. absolutely where you are. So if you're a Christian out there, like um, Franklin said, money is a tool. Just the way your car is a tool. It mm-hmm. gets you where you want to go. It's mm-hmm. a tool. It's neutral. I know there's this perception out there. They say money changes people. No, money doesn't change anyone. It simply amplifies who you already mm-hmm. are. So if you've been a selfish person, self-conceited, wicked, if you have money, the money will just highlight those things. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. if you're selfless, you're sacrificial, you're kind, you're generous, all those things, when you have money, that's what will be amplified. That's mm-hmm. what will be I like it. So if you're out there like I'm afraid, I don't really want to make a lot of money because as a Christian, holiness, what are poverty is not next to holiness. Poverty is not what makes you righteous. No, it's not even God's plan for people to live in poverty, right? So that's the thing. Like, mm-mm. don't be afraid to desire these things. But remember that your motive matters a lot. We know God is not looking at the outward, but God looks at the inward. So yeah. as you are desiring to make all these things, just remember the why. Mm-hmm. Let's let let it be front and center. This is mm-hmm. why I want to make money, mm-hmm. and let it always tie to something that can bring about a positive change mm-hmm. and an impact in the mm-hmm. world, and of mm-hmm. course, spreading the gospel because that's mm-hmm. our major reason why mm-hmm. we're here to make mm-hmm. disciples of all nations, baptizing mm-hmm. them in the name of Jesus. Like mm-hmm. that's it. So yeah, 100%. those were all the questions I had. I didn't know if you wanted to add something before we talk about a surprise. Not really a surprise because I've posted it on my social media. But okay. did you want to add anything to the conversation? Yes, please. yes, please. yes. Um, so just going back to um, uh, this notion because I feel like it's kind of like a mindset that has been passed across to mostly like a mostly, like mostly Christians, right? Mm-hmm. So I think um, I know like for me, I struggled with that mindset for a very long time. And, um, and you know, because our beliefs actually direct us. It's what we believe that actually um, push us forward, right? Mm-hmm. Because most times, um, especially when it comes to this um, area of um, uh, money, right? And you say, you say or maybe because you, you have a path, a belief that was passed to you saying, oh, if you have a lot of money, you're not going to be uh, able to, to have a close relationship with God. Mm-hmm. What do you think that's going to happen? What do you think that's that, uh, that if that's going to have effect that's going to have towards your pursuit for money it's going to help mm-hmm. people, like, keep you from actually desiring to yes. have much more money but it doesn't mean that um you don't you know um having much more money is going to actually <laughs> it's actually going to break your relationship with god absolutely no. but not. it's the belief right so that belief has to be made right so that belief really has to be set right right and so i know like for me i had to actually like you know work on my beliefs especially around money mostly because i noticed um, it was like a self-limiting belief, limiting mm. belief. I wanted, I didn't, because there were a lot of things that I really wanted to do with, with money, but I was like, you were like, what's happening? Why does it seem like there is um, resistance, right? And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, like the belief, the belief is what really directs us. That's what we, I think mean, it happens on a subconscious level. And so that's something it's that, so true. Exactly, that's something we have to first of all get rid of. We have to clear our beliefs around money. Because like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, and I started telling myself that, hey, look, um, People in the Bible, they were, there are lots of people who had the money in the Bible, but still, these people were like, 
Look, David was called a friend of God. Like God, uh, the man after God's heart. Abraham was first friend of God. Like these people, they had a lot of money, and still their relationship with God was very, very, very still tight. There. All mm-hmm. of these very awesome, <laughs> awesome um, attributes, right? Uh, um, to their names. And so I was like, okay, this has to change. And so I had to do like you know some inner workings, and I'm like, you know, thank God for so like delivering me from that mindset. <laughs> I know it's such a it's such a negative mindset, which is why we hear things like, oh, you hear that a certain Christian has a private jet, and mm-hmm. then the conversation around that's so, like, oh, why can't they sell the private jet and feed the poor? But then you know, like this is probably doing amazing philanthropic work. Like, why can't they just enjoy? I feel like also sometimes we limit ourselves to things we can enjoy. We feel like mm-hmm. as believers, which I mean, everything should be done in moderation, yeah. but there's nothing wrong in having a private jet there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong in these things right mm-hmm. you can do philanthropy like you don't it's not until you sell your private jet before you know that you are doing philanthropy exactly. you can do both at mm-hmm. the same time you can desire the good things of life right you work for it you might as well enjoy it it kind of reminds me of like judas when they were trying to spend money on something and he was like complaining i don't remember the scripture exactly but it was just pretty much complaining that oh why can't we use the money for this? Is, and yeah yeah, exactly. Please. So our perspective, our mindset must change. I even believe that having more money can even improve your relationship with God. Mm-hmm. You have like investments that are giving you dividends that are enough to sustain sustain your life you might decide not to go into work every day you might decide to say, okay mm-hmm. i want to start working part time mm-hmm. certain times i'll use it to pray more spend more time in the word and everything mm-hmm. is when you are too busy look chasing the paper look, working right. from, yeah. exactly from paycheck to paycheck when will you remember that mm-hmm. god is the author of your salvation mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah we definitely need that paradigm shift that mind right. shift to know that right. okay right. money isn't a bad thing mm-hmm. like money isn't a bad thing we should be good stewards of it mm-hmm. we should apply moderation to these things we should be charitable mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. always remain grounded in the fact that all that we mm-hmm. have comes from god exactly and we should find ways to establish his kingdom and do things that are pleasing and things that align with his desires as well. 100%, so, yeah. 100%, 100%. Yeah. Can I just say one, one very quick thing? Of uh, course. So, so uh, talking about this, uh, the mindset, the, uh, the, the wrong uh, belief, right? So something really very practical because I believe in pra- being practical, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, so something that I, this, this was an exercise I had to do to actually help me with breaking free from that mindset. So if anybody listening is really down for the challenge, if you're looking to, you know, like um, have this um, paradigm shift, especially regarding uh, your relationship to money, because we have a relationship to money, and it's how um, that relationship to, is that relationship to money that um, affects uh, our level of pursuit for money, right? So if you're really down for the challenge, this is one thing you can do. So get like a piece of paper, or ideally like a journal, or, or where you can always uh, make reference. Or you can always make reference to, and then you write down all of the things that you believe about money, mm-hmm. especially those that were passed to you from say like your parents or the people who, uh, who were like role models to you uh, that shapes your life right from your tender age that you can remember. Maybe they said money grows on tree or oh, money is very, very hard to come by. Oh, you have to really sweat by your brow to get money, right? So I'm not saying any, they, they, may, be, they may be true, they may be false, like it doesn't matter. Write down every single thing mm-hmm. that you believe about money, right? And then go through those, go through the list and then start asking yourself, is this what I want to accept for myself? Right? Because when it was passed to you, it was passed to you like raw. You didn't really care. You just took it in. Right? And that's what started directing your pursuits towards money. So whether or not it was wrong, to Mm -hmm. you, it doesn't really matter. Because to you is your truth, is your, your belief. Right? And then you accepted it unconsciously. Right? So now look at that list and start asking yourself, is this something that I want to believe about money? Does money grow on tree, actually? Look around the tree. Do you see money around? <laughs> if, it does, if that's not true, then strike it out. That's not what you want to believe. The second, if you look and see uh, one other one that, okay, you have to really sweat, like work 100 hours before you can make $1. Is that really what you want to believe and accept mm-hmm. about money? Well, if it's not, then strike it out. Go through all of those lists and then take the ones you want to accept, right? That you want to be your truth then you're wrong with it and make that your own belief. If, if mm-hmm. you want, you can actually revisit that list and tell it to yourself every single day, right? Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. I can, I'm going to make a lot of money. Like it's mm-hmm. my fortune to be wealthy. So do something like practical and I can assure you, you're going to see a mm-hmm. difference. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm like the queen of affirmations, right? And I have like, <laughs> I have a lot of affirmations. Anytime I spend, let's say, one moment I spend like money that I wasn't planning to spend and like it drains my account, I begin to say affirmations to myself. Oh, yeah. I'm the daughter of a mega rich no, god. Oh, true. money comes yeah. to me effortlessly. Mm-hmm. I don't struggle. I, I have the, <laughs> like, I like just confess it. And my husband is also so good at it. Like, oh. Yeah. Money comes to me effortlessly. There is no struggling. There is no, so like affirming and Mm. confessing these things, right? Oh, Mm. I have wisdom to create wealth easily. I have insights. Like just affirm yourself when it comes to money. If you're someone that feels anxious a lot about money, or maybe me and Franklin will have a different conversation about money (laughs) in the future. Because I know Uh something- We should do that, right? (laughs) We should. I feel like a lot of millennials, we deal with these things. We deal with it a lot. So if you have issues with money, like- Mm We'll hook you up. We'll have a conversation about it. So, yeah, <laughs> affirm yourself. Make these confessions every day. Like the words that we speak, they are living, they are life. So uh, don't sleep on it. Like yeah. confess, confess, keep mm-hmm. speaking it and you'll see manifestations of it. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So Amen. we're going to talk to you guys about an event. So this video is going to go out. So we're currently recording on the 26th of June. This video will be out on the 1st of july our event will be on the 10th of july franklin do you want to tell us more about this awesome event oh without pleasure okay okay <clears throat> so um you know uh first of all before i kind of like you know share about the event i just want to like give like a, a the motivation behind the event the backstory right and uh and build the cotton so you know like um coming in to you know like canada right i um i realized and um, this has actually been an observation right from my time you know, as a student up until to, to date. I noticed that especially within the, let's like, say, uh, ch- Christian or church community, right? There were not really, you know, a lot of programs that were catering to the needs of, say, like, uh, especially young professionals outside of the faith, right? So um, I didn't really get to learn about, say, like, you know, finances. I didn't get to learn about, say, um, uh, like, like career growth or investing in real estate in um in stocks and all of those very fancy things that were obviously a lot of a lot of opportunities that were you know like in this new um place that i found myself and it wasn't until um early in my career that i started focusing and going deep into this thing then i was like oh my god what would have happened if i actually started early right i would have been you know farther apart or farther away from where i am but you know no regrets <laughs> It's just how it is, right? Accept and just you know move on and see what what can be fixed. And so it was. Uh, I think it was sometime last year that I you know just had this vision of okay, what if you know it was uh, a program that would actually help cater to the needs of um, of like you know young professionals and help and equip them and empower them um, to actually begin winning early in life because time is of the essence, you know, time is of the essence, and then help them also with you know with maintaining a well-rounded and a balanced life. And so it was like, you know, last year it happened and I was like, okay, man, I, I think it's high time to make something happen. And, uh, and that's how come, you know, um, the idea of uh, step up. Came Yay. To my step up. So it starts in, this is like taking your life to the next level, wherever it is, because there's always a next level in life. Like this is always a next level. So it's a program tied to the step up. And the main aim, again, like I mentioned, is to, you know, uh, to help empower, educate, and to equip um, like young professionals, um, helping them to start winning early in life so they can enjoy uh, a well-rounded and a centered and um, balanced life. So so that's mm-hmm. like, I'm really very fired up and excited about it. Me and, uh, too. We have very, very exciting and wonderful, um, amazing speakers. Uh, yes. Evie, like BB BB is going to be there. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And when I was putting the events up together, I was like, honestly, you were, the, you were one of the first people that came to mind. So I was like, okay, I need to be my, um, on, on the event. So, uh, so yeah, BB is going to be there. And um I'm sure it's going to be a blast. It's going to be amazing. It will. I will put the registration link below. So please, you guys should register. Like, it's going to be amazing. So this is open for current people living in Canada, future people wanting to live in Canada, even for those that live in Nigeria. Like, what we're going to be sharing is still knowledge, Mm -hmm. right? You can find ways to um, adopt it to your current situation. And Mm -hmm. who knows, you might be a future 
Canadian. Who knows? Maybe <laughs> coming here that you don't know yet. So yeah, I'll absolutely. put the link in the description. Please register. I would love to <laughs> see you. It will be amazing. I started putting my slides together already, and I was like, oh, these people are not ready. Uh -huh, it's going to be uh -huh, amazing. Uh -huh. I'm super <laughs> excited. Same so here. this brings us to the end of our conversation today. Thank you so much, Franklin, for coming back to my YouTube channel. It means a lot to me. You have yeah, no yeah, idea. <laughs> Um, yeah, so if you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment below. If you have a question for Franklin, you can also leave a comment below. Um, so yeah, I look forward to seeing all the engagement on this video. Thank you once more and have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye. Bye. <laughs>